now let's put the tools of discovery using the mechanism of injury method to use. In this scenario, we've got a, maybe a six-year-old boy who was climbing on the bleacher system and it appears that they may have slipped and fallen. So how do we apply mechanism of injury to this? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do if he's lying on the ground is I'm gonna look initially to see if he's okay. If he's unconscious, unresponsive, we may have a medical emergency of which I'm not gonna delay any further. I'm gonna activate emergency medical services with my cell phone, or I'm gonna tell somebody, hey, you in the plaid shirt, go call 911 and come back, I might need your help as I continue my assessment. But in this case, as we can see, he's sitting upright, he's not crying. It looks like he might be holding his left knee every now and again, he kind of rubs it. So I'm already suspecting we may have a left knee injury. But what kind of injury is it? Is it severe? Well, he's got it bent. It's not angled or misformed. So it's not something that's jumping right out at me that it could be serious, but you never know. But as I look at the mechanism, I know he climbed off this, this step here. I can see muddy foot tracks on the seat itself. And maybe he slipped. And as he slipped, did he hyperextend his knee, causing a sprain or a strain or some kind of dislocation injury? That's my first one. Secondly, we have a rigid seat here. When he slipped, did he hit the back of his head on the actual bleacher system as well? So I might begin to ask him, hey, does your head hurt? Do you have any pain anywhere? If this patient is able to talk to me, I'm gonna use as many open-ended questions as I can. I really don't think it's a good idea to ask specifics in every situation because if I do and I say hey does your shoulder hurt oh yeah yeah my shoulder hurts oh does your stomach hurt yeah oh yeah my stomach hurts too sometimes we can lead the patient down a path that doesn't really exist so I much more prefer to actually ask them hey can you tell me what hurts and then let them point those things out to me now the whole time I'm going to be watching for unknowns. I already know that the mechanism of injury not only could cause a sprain or a strain of the ankle, the knee, and back injury, but I also know it could be a head injury. And if it is a suspected head injury, we might start seeing a loss of consciousness or a decreased level of consciousness. So I'm gonna be watching for that, and obviously as soon as we have decreased level of consciousness, airway, breathing, or circulation problems, any kind of numbness, tingling, or inability to move one of their four limbs, it immediately becomes a 911 call and an emergency, and they're gonna be going in by ambulance. But right now, we're not sure if they have to go in by ambulance. It might be that he just bumped his knee and it hurts, and now I can kind of incorporate the parent or the guardian or the nanny who's on scene. And I can start to ask them, is this little guy answering questions appropriately to you? Do they seem like normal to you? Or do they seem maybe more lethargic or a little bit different? And kind of use them as a help. I can ask them, do they have any medical problems that I should know about? Any allergies to medications? And start putting kind of an assessment together. I'm also going to make sure that I'm not completely myopic on this knee. I'm going to be thinking of other potential injuries. Did he put an arm out when he fell and therefore sprain a wrist or break a bone in his arm? And start kind of watching for those when I do my head to toe exam, looking for other not so noticeable injuries that I should also be aware of.